अन अकेडमी लेट्स क्रैक इट हेलो एवरी वन आई एम डॉक्टर वैष्णवी योर ई एन टी फैकल्टी ऑन द अन अकेडमी प्लेटफॉर्म टू मेक लर्निंग वेरी सिंपल ईजी टू अंडरस्टैंड टू बी एबल टू रिप्रोड्यूस और रिकलेक्ट इन द एग्जामिनेशन आई एम कमिंग अप विद दीज वीडियोज विच विल हेल्प यू अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्सेप्ट क्लियर अंटिल योर कोर सो लेट्स बिगिन विद द टॉपिक फॉर टूडे विच इज अट्रोफिक राइनाइटिस वॉट इज अट्रोफिक राइनाइटिस सो अट्रोफिक राइनाइटिस इज अ कंडीशन एज द नेम सजेस्ट देर इज अट्रोफी ऑफ द म्यूकोसा ऑफ द नोज पैरानेजल साइनसिस द एपिथीलियम वेदर इट इज ऑल फैक्ट्री और एनी सॉर्ट ऑफ टिश्यू इन साइड द नोज एंड पैरानेजल साइनसिस सो वेन वी सी अ नॉर्मल नेजल कैविटी we see that the septum is in the midline we have turbinates on the lateral wall of nose and the olfactory epithelium in the roof of the nose normally the mucosa is red and it is vascular but what happens in atrophic rhinitis is there is end arteritis resulting in the mucosa becoming pale so initially the mucosa becomes pale then the turbinates atrophy and then the olfactory epithelium also atrophies once there is atrophy of all the structures inside the nose when they shrink in size you get wide roomy nasal cavities now when air current goes through wide roomy nasal cavities what happens the humidification of the air is lost as a result there is dry crust that fall into the nose now when there is a dry crust that is formed into the nose these crusts are extremely foul smelling but the patient himself cannot smell this foul smell but the people around can smell this condition is called as merciful anosmia now why does a patient not able to smell this foul smell coming from his own nasal cavity it's because there is atrophy of the olfactory epithelium which we've just seen so when there is atrophy of the olfactory epithelium the patient himself cannot perceive the foul smell coming from the nose so this is something that happens in the pathophysiology of the disease now how do we treat it obviously you want to keep the nose dry you want to keep the nose moist so you will irrigate the nose with different sorts of solution the commonness that we use is called as the alkaline nasal douching solution which consists of two parts of sodium chloride one part of sodium bicarbonate and one part of sodium biborate this is mixed in 280 ml of water and the nose is irrigated so that the crust fall off and the nose becomes moist there are other solutions like glucose and glycerin estradiol extract and so on and so forth now let's understand the surgical perspective of this condition now when we come to the surgeries for atrophic rhinitis the first surgery that we do is called as the young's operation so as you can see in young's operation in the vestibule of the nose we elevate the mucosa from the lateral wall from the medial wall from the floor and you suture them in a t shape manner like a triradiate so a triradiate incision is given on the sides of the walls of the nose and you suture them together so that you close the nasal cavity completely so it is just closure of the nasal cavity so that dry air currents do not go inside and the nasal tissue will try to heal and then after 6 months of time the opening of the nasal cavity is reestablished that is called as young's operation modified young's is also another surgery where instead of complete closure you will do only opening of 10 mm so you will narrow down the opening to 10 mm then you have got the next surgery which is called as lotens lagers operation what is lotens lagers operation this is a surgery where you fracture the lateral wall of the nose and you push it towards the midline so as a result what you're doing you're trying to narrow down the nasal cavity so if you see young's modified young's lotens lager or any other surgery that we do for atrophic rhinitis the whole principle behind it is we want to narrow the nasal passages limiting the air current that is going in and out thus limiting the crust formation in the nose and thus the further disease process so here in lotens lagers operation we medialize the lateral wall of the nose the third surgery could be injection of fat or injection of teflon in the submucosal spaces of the turbinates we've already seen that the bone inside the turbinate is shrunken the mucosa is also shrunken so in the submucosal space if i inject fat 
or if I inject Teflon, it will act as a spacer and bulge up the turbinates. And now that the turbinates are bulged and boggy, they reduce or limit the airway space, thus serving the same purpose of my other two surgeries. So I hope you got an idea in brief about atrophic rhinitis, although there is much more to it, but this was a short video to help you understand very crisply the uh, pathophysiology, the organism that is causing this, what happens in the symptoms and what, how do you treat it medically and surgically and this should register into your brains and be effectively learned for a longer period of time. If you think these sort of videos will help you, benefit you, please do leave a yes message or please do it again message in the comment section below so that this will motivate me to create more such content and help you learn things in an easier way. I will see you all again in my next video. Until then, take care and bye-bye.